Hi guys, Alaska Crafty Gal Victoria here. Guess what I've been doing? You guessed it, I've been sewing. Today's video, I'm coming at you with some sewing projects I've been working on. I also went down to the store that I was selling my stuff at that closed. So I had to go down and pick up my inventory. So I wanted to show you guys some of the projects I was selling down at the store. I also have a few crocheted items I want to show you. I've been working on and some completed projects. And I also wanted to show you my progress on a whip. Also, I have a little bit of personal chat. Get to know me a little bit better. Anyways, let's get started, shall we? Hi, guys. Welcome back to my, my channel. I'm Victoria, Alaska Crafty Gal Victoria. Um, I want to welcome all of my new subscribers and tell you thank you for joining me and welcome back all of my previous subscribers who are still watching and giving me the thumbs up. Appreciate you guys so much. Um, let's get started, shall we? So as you can see from the intro, I have been doing some sewing. I um, made a whole bunch whole bunch of these um, triangle totes that I love so much. I made a whole bunch of them. <clears throat> I wanted to perfect the pattern because I was not really happy with the way, I mean I was happy with them. I liked them a lot. But if you guys remember, these are ones I had previously made and shown in another video. And like when you would hold it up it would kind of like sag and dip down. I wasn't happy with it, but the pattern didn't call for any interfacing in them. So I didn't use it. So I wound up ripping the seams out of these three and adding interfacing, which just made them even more lovely. So Terry, if you're watching over at um, the Yarn Joy podcast, you had mentioned that you might want to make some of these and that you bookmarked the patterns. If you do, my dear, use interfacing. Because like this one, when it when I would stand it up, it literally would just like fall like that. It wouldn't stand at all. But now they stand very nicely and they're more durable and I like them a lot better. So these three I've already fixed. I've already shown you those. So I'm going to toss those over there. But then this is a new one. And whatever's on the handle is what's on the inside here. The fabric I used on the inside. I love this one. So I made this one. I made Tinkerbell. Oh, let me hold it the right way. Maybe you'll get a better idea of what it looks like. Oops, I got to cut some threads. Um, Tinkerbell. And it's got purple on the inside. And then I made two of these like Hawaiian print ones, which I love. And this one has a white handle and it's white on the inside because this one, I like used this pink handle and had pink on the inside. And just a little side note, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are like me you you sewists out there you have like all this pretty fabric and then you've got all these scraps right from previous projects or whatnot and i i love this pink it's so pretty i have to have an overhead light on because it's a little overcast today and i think it's gonna get rainy so my lighting's not the best but it's like a light pink right and i have more like a i i bought a remnant if you guys remember my fabric haul a while back. Um, but I didn't want to cut it. I can't even believe I'm going to admit that to you right now. I'm kind of embarrassed. <laughs> but I didn't want to cut it yet because I had scraps. But I didn't have enough to do a whole nother bag. So I just used white. Hmm. Okay. I was getting off topic. Then I made this one. I love the colors in this one. And then the inside handle looks like this. So I wound up using this like peachy thread 
it's not really peach. It's like a coral color. It matches the orange on here. I wound up using that because I ran out of purple thread and I wasn't about to go and buy a spool of purple thread because I don't use purple a whole, whole lot in my sewing. <coughs> Excuse me. I mostly use white or black or like tans, you know, but I asked my sister, Lisa, hi, Lisa, if that would look weird if I used that orangey on this purple fabric because I was like, it'll match the outside. What do you think? And she was like, no, I'd go for it. It looks good. So I did. And I actually like it. And then that's on the inside. So thanks, Lisa. Thank you, sister. She's my sister. Um, and then I made this cow one, little cow print, and it's got this fabric on the inside. Then I did this, I'm not going to show you that one yet. I'm going to show you this one. I made this little, you know what I love these for? Off topic again. So I made one to hold all of my wonder clips, my clips for, or, um, when I'm sewing. Then I kept one over by my crochet table, my hot mess crochet table that I've showed you stacked pile high with stuff before. I keep one over there because I put all my buttons. I used to, I had a coffee mug. Well, first I was using like this yarn thing that I got at Joann's. And then I started putting them in a coffee mug because it was just easier to sit, sort through. Well, now I have one of these sitting over there. It's got all my buttons and my stitch markers. I love them. I do. So I made that tree one. I like this fabric, little green polka dots. That's what's on the inside. And then I made this for somebody special. And it is a little kitty cat one. Look at the kitty cats. Aw. Little kitty cats. And that's the fabric on the inside. So I made all these. Love them. Love them. So that is that. I will put a pattern link in the description box below for any of those of you that might want to make them. Um, they're a lot of fun. They're easy and it's coming really handy. Um, a girlfriend of mine, she wanted one. And so I made her one for her daughter and her daughter uses it like a purse and she takes it in the car with all her little goodies and her little special things she likes to carry around. So I thought that was cute. So that is that. That's what I sewn so far. And then I made, I don't know if I showed this to you guys yet. I don't think I did, but I made this little pouch. I don't like this. I don't like this right here. Like where the zipper goes in. I want to, I saw, I think it was on, on blueprint where you can get like paid patterns or free patterns as well. I think there was a pattern on there where you can do like the little tabs, you know, on the zipper ends, those cute little tabs that you can do to avoid this business. So, but I made this little makeup bag. It's got a little, I made it out of a pillowcase. These are old pillowcases. My daughter's old pillowcases. She kind of outgrew this. So I just cut them and made it out of old pillowcases. And I just think it's super cute. A little makeup bag or whatever. And then before I made my reusable produce bags, my netting ones with the fabric and the drawstring and all that. Before I remade, I mean remade, before I made those, I have made these because I was going to use these as reusable produce bags. And I was going to put like, uh, take a piece of fabric and cut it out in the shape of the fruit, like an apple or whatever and sew it onto the front, like applique it onto the front. But then I also thought, wouldn't it be fun if, cause I have fabric paint, if I, and I have stencils. So if I 
did it in fabric paint and stencil, like stenciled it on, like real cute, like farm fresh and put like the stencil of like fruit on there. But then I used this before I made my other bags and I was real sad because I had put green onions in it. Well, it's muslin. That's what the fabric is. It's muslin. And so it didn't, it, they dried out. They dried out and I had to throw them away. But I was experimenting with different pull strings and all that. This is just yarn. I just wanted it to be lightweight. I was experimenting with um, different drawstrings and different stitches. But they still will make cute like little gift bags. I won't use them for produce bags. But I love them no matter what. They're simple. They're easy. I can even use it as a project bag if I wanted to. You know, put a little crochet yarn ball on there or something. But I just think they're really cute. I bought like, I think, two yards of muslin because I wanted to practice. And muslin is pretty inexpensive to practice on. So, and it's lightweight. So that's that. I made that one. I made this one and it's got like a silky ribbon, just a side drawstring. Made all different sizes. Not a whole bunch of them, just like four. <coughs> How come every time I get on here, I, I cough? <clears throat> Excuse me, got a scratch in my throat. I made this one right here and I was practicing like with my different, I messed up right there, um, with my different stitches on my machine because <laughs> it's kind of fun to do that. And then this is just jute. So that's just that. That's that one. And then this is, I don't know what it's called. I think it's what, gross, gross grain ribbon. This is my favorite kind of drawstring. And then somebody else, I'm sorry, I don't remember who told me, but somebody told me to use shoelaces. <clears throat> one of my subscribers, they said, you should, shoelaces work great. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. But um, yeah, this like ribbed kind of ribbon, that's my favorite kind to use for, for this. So I bought some more, all different colors. So I made those and, <laughs> oh, and besides what I've done recently, I'll just show you everything I've done recently, sewing and crocheting. Um, look at these. Are these not, hold on, let me fix it real quick. Okay. So are these not the cutest little baby shoes you ever saw? They're little Converse. They're little Converse tennis shoes. I have another pattern to make, Adidas. <laughs> They're so stinking cute. I was way out of my comfort zone making baby shoes, let me tell you. Um, but I did it, and it was so fun, and they're so cute, little baby tennis shoes. Little baby Converse tennis shoes. Um, just a little side note here. I have a, I think I have such a hard time. The reason why it was out of my comfort zone is because um, holding and crocheting with a little tiny hook is hard for me. It's really hard for me because, okay, so about, gosh, I don't want to tell you how many years ago because then you'll know exactly how old I am. When I was 32 years old, I had a stroke and it affected my left side. So gripping, um, trying to hold yarn and crochet with a little tiny hook and hold a project is really hard for me. That's why amigurumi is so hard for me. <coughs> and I lose, I lose concentration a lot. Like Oh my gosh. I, I, and that was not even planned the other day. For example, losing concentration, I went to tie a magic knot and for the life of me, I could not remember how to do it. I've tied a gazillion magic knots and I could not remember to save my life. I'm like staring off into space and my husband was home and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm trying to remember something. He's like, oh, 
And then I was like, he's like, what? And I was like, I can't remember how to tie a knot. And he's like, what? I'm like, I can't remember how to tie a knot. Not like a regular knot, a magic knot. And I had to look it up. I had to look it up. I don't know why, but it escaped me. It just escaped me. But yeah. And here's a little tidbit about me so you can get to know me a little bit better. So I had a stroke when I was 32. I had a blood clot in my brain. And um, when I was in the hospital, of course, they did a thousand tests. And they discovered I have a genetic blood disorder, factor five leading mutation. And that's what caused the blood clot. It causes your blood to be thicker, caused the blood clot, which caused the stroke. So I'm on blood thinner for that. And um, yeah, so weakness, I get weak. I get, when I get tired, it's really pronounced and obvious, but my left side is so much weaker than my right side. So little tiny work with little tiny needles and little tiny, not needles, cause I don't knit little tiny crochet hooks or, um, small stuff where I have to grip real close is really hard for me. It is. It's really hard. So this was way out of my comfort zone, but I did it and I was so happy. And now I want to make a whole bunch, not a whole bunch of these, but a whole bunch of like, I have another pattern. So I have a, another pattern for little Adidas baby shoes. And then I have a pattern for little baby boots, but they're not just like boot boots, like any kind of boots. They're like, they're like worker man boots and they're so cute. They're so cute. So I don't have any babies in the family. The only other baby item I have made so far was a baby hat, that little cupcake hat, which was a lot of fun to make, but that's a hat and I, I can do hats, but I just love these. So I'll put a link to the, um, free pattern for this. If anybody's interested in making the little converse baby shoes, rumor has it one of my kids, my older kids, my grown kids possibly is discussing with his current girlfriend in the not so distant future of starting a family possibly. So we'll see what happens there. I can finally be a grandma. Huh. Okay. <coughs> so, oh, and then this is stuff. I'll show you guys this stuff, but this is stuff I made before. It's not anything that um, I've done recently. This was all the stuff I picked up from the store that closed. So I had to go pick up all my inventory. So I have these towels. Oh, and Billy, you know how you... I sent you the 4th of July towels and you had asked if I ever did them in half or that you mentioned that you did them in half. And I said, sometimes I do, but not all the time. Not very often. Sometimes I do. So like these ones were half towels because these are like thicker towels and my mom really likes the half towels. So I had these down at the store. I'll just show you guys these quickly. I don't want this video to be, you know, 80 hours long. I had these ones down at the store, little veggies. And these are half towels as well. I had these down at the store. Little, I made a set of these for my mom. She loved them because her kitchen is kind of like that. I had these ones down at the store. I got these towels at Kohl's. I had these towels down at the store. These ones are cute. Look at the buttons I had found at clearance on at um, Joann's. And they kind of matched the little round knobby things here. So I thought that looked cute, but I got these down at Kohl's or the towels. And then I crocheted the toppers. These ones I got at Walmart and these are like the thinner towel. So it's the double. So I got those, those were all down at treasure alley before they closed. And then I had some messy bun hats down there. Just the messy bun hats that you do your pony. I know a lot of people like to sew like the little round ponytail holder in there. I don't do that only because I've made these um, quite a bit. And sometimes that ponytail thing breaks and, and then you're kind of, 
it's stuck in there. You know what I mean? So I don't make it with it. That way you, if you have like thicker hair or real curly hair, then it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The hole is big enough. You know what I mean? So I made this one. I made this one. And this is out of that Premier yarn, Deborah Norval Premier. This is just worsted weight Aran. This is Premier yarn. This is worsted weight in black. My lighting is bad. Sorry, let's go over here. Black. Um, this is Red Heart Super Saver, like the speckled, not speckled. Yeah, I guess. Speckled. Speckled. Worsted weight. And then this one, I love this one. This one is made out of the Lion Brand textures. Oh my gosh, look at those colors. Isn't that awesome? I love the colors in this hat. I had, when they had their big old sale for dollar skeins and I bought all that fettuccine, I also bought, I think, 10 of the textures. I bought a package of orange and a package of blue. I don't know if that's the official color name. But um, I love it. I love this texture. It's soft. I don't know what else really to make with it, but like hats and boot cuffs and scarves maybe. But it's kind of hard to work with, but I love, I love the result. So that's that. And then I, down at the store, I also had um, Swiffer covers, crocheted Swiffer covers. I will put the link to the free pattern for this in the description box as well. I had this one. And this all made out of cotton yarn. And then I had this one. Those are the only four I had left of those. And then I had down there as well some, oh no, that's something else. Okay, so I never did wind up making more fabric headbands. But I had a bunch down at the store, so I thought, well, I mean, I'm actually glad I didn't make more because now they're closed. But I just, these are the little fabric headbands I make. They're double-sided fabric headbands, little wood, woodland creatures. And then on the inside is um, like forest trees. And what I do, it's reversible. It's a double-sided fabric headband. So if you wear it like this, the forest trees are on the back of the band. But if you wear it like this with the little forest trees, then the little woodland creatures are on the back of the band. And this is size kids, but it'll fit up to, I believe, 18 inches around. And I put a little tag on it. It says that it's a double-sided fabric headband. It's like two in one. This is a kid size. I just say what it's made of and washing instructions. But I made a whole bunch of these. I have all kinds. Bicycles. And then on the inside is flowers. This is an adult size. If there's duplicates, I won't show you the duplicates. I love this one, the fox. <laughs> and then it's black on the inside. I have one just like this and I wear it all the time. Little fishies. <laughs> I'll insert a picture if I can remember how to do it of the fishy one. And they had wanted Alaska themed items. So I had made some Alaska places. These are places in Alaska. And so I had made some of those. Another Alaska one. And these I just thought were too cute. These little girls, these little vintage girls. And then it's yellow on the inside. And then I have a pink one like that too. Pink girls and then floral on the inside and let me see I just don't want to I don't want to show you a bunch of duplicates because then this video will be seven hours long oh, yeah. Alaska oh, okay and then I have let me see let me get all these extras out of the way there's one two three three of those I have these um that folk art looking kind and then flowers on the inside 
these flowers. Alaska bikes. And then I have this kind. It's just cute. But this pattern is a lot of fun. It's really easy, works up quickly. And I will put the link to the free pattern for this one inside as well. These are just extras, duplicates. And then I had a bunch of corner fabric bookmarks, which I told you guys I would show you. I know I showed you guys some, but these are some I had down at the store. And just the way I package them and things like that, I'll show you guys. And of course, I forgot something else I wanted to show you. Because I'm forgetful like that. I meant to bring everything over here. Sorry. Maybe I'll show it in another video. But it's something that I also make. But, so these are the little fabric corner bookmarks that I make. And I just put it in a plastic bag and... This is just scrapbook paper. I just put what it is. And then on the back, I put a little note. And it just says, a delightful way to mark your page. Tuck a few pages into the corner pocket. Great for any book lover. And I just use my scraps, you know, and I try to color, like, coordinate or accent. And I had some of this. I love this. I love, I love this camper fabric. But I just um, make, you know... Little corner fabric bookmarks. I like this one too. Little deer, little vintagey flowers on the back. This is like denim and red polka dots. Then I had some leftover puppy fabric. I was like, what can go with that? And I used like this funky vintage. I like that. So yeah, I make it. I have like 30 of these. I'm not going to show you all of them for sure. So those are the fabric corner bookmarks I had down at the store. And then I had, so I made a book like this for Billy and um, it's just a notebook. It's like those composition notebooks. I don't, I don't call, they're not really junk journals cause they're not full of all kinds of stuff, but I just, I just like them. I use them for like pattern writing or you can use them as a diary, anything like that. You know what I mean? But this is how I had them packaged down at the store. These are those composition notebooks and I put, you know, the paper, I cover, I cover the covers with, um, fat, not fabric, fabric on the brain, um, scrapbook paper. And I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. I won't open all of them. I'll just kind of give you a brief so I had this one. They're all Alaska themed, like I said. I had this one. I guess I could have brought them closer so I didn't have to... St I guess I could have brought them closer so I didn't have to stretch so far. I had this one. A little campfire. This one with the trees. This one... I like these little trees. This one. This one. I like this one. The denim. I like them all. I made this one. This one's cute. I like this one because it's got a little moosey on the front. I love the moose. Look at the cute little moose. <clears throat> then I made... This one's just got like scenery, hiking boots, like wood grain. It's more basic scenery. And then this is what they look like on the inside. So I opened this one up. Oops, stuff falling out of it. So what I do is I cover, like I said, with scrapbook paper, the front and the back of these. And then I put little goodies surprises inside. So inside, so if you decide you want to use it as a journal, I have like little journaling cards. I have die cuts, little Alaska themed die cuts, bears and whatnot. I have um, like a journaling note card. 
and then photo mats. These are photo mats and you can like, if you wanted to use it as a diary, let's say, or something like that, you'd put your photo on there and then put it in your book and then write, today was a great day. I went fishing and blah, blah, blah. So I put some photo mats in there. I put, um, photo mats and then on the back cover, same thing. I do the cover. I put a little pocket and then I have the, the extra goodies in there. So these are another thing that I make and was selling down at the store. So those are those. And then lastly, down at the store, I had a bunch of handmade magnets that I make. And these are super cute. These are super fun to do. And I just love them. I love them, love them, love them. So these are some of the magnets I make. And see those I hope there's not a glare kind of glary but these are some of the magnets I make so I had these down at the store I have them separated by tissue paper because I didn't want to scratch them they are they're protected you know but so what I do is I just take a wood square take a little wood square and I paint it or stain it and then I put a embellishment on it either scrapbook paper stickers whatever I think is cute and then I Mod Podge it onto there and then I just glue a magnet onto the back but these are so fun and I made a whole bunch of them they really wanted a lot of Alaska themed items because we have a lot of visitors up here that come in the summer and do a lot of salmon fishing and things like that. So I made a whole bunch of Alaska themed ones. And then they closed. And then this is, oh, these are all cattywampus. Hold on. Let me fix it. So they don't look all, there we go. And then here's some more that I made. They're just cute. I just make all different kinds. A lot of, like I said, a lot of Alaska ones. But they're a lot of fun to make. I love it. Oop. All right. So that was the stuff down at the store. I think that was everything. Yeah, that was everything. Okay, and then... I haven't done a whole, whole lot of crochet other than the baby shoes. And um, I made some some more um, boot cuffs, Christmas colors, red, white, and green. Yes, Sue, I know, you're a Grinch. But I am not a Grinch. <laughs> Hi, Sky. by the way. How are you, sweet girl? Um, so, yes, Sue, I am not a Grinch. So, I love Christmas. So, I made some Christmas colored boot cuffs. All I got to do now um, on these is add the buttons. Because I like to put little button embellishments on there. And then, I've been working on my nephew's blanket. I just want to be done. I want to be done with it. So, let me show you. I'm trying to find my stitch marker from before. Okay. So way down here, this is where we ended the last time I showed you my nephew's blanket way down here. And I want to say I've done like 19 inches or so, but I've done a lot. Ooh, look at all those. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I did all that and I'm to here. Oh, I'm to here now. I'm going this way. So I'm to here. So I did quite a bit. I mean, that's a lot but it's looking real good. I just want to be done. My poor nephew, maybe he'll get it for Christmas. <laughs> poor kid. His birthday was at the end of April. We are now at the end of June. That's two months. I could have had this done in two months. <coughs> I love doing blankets. I make a lot of blankets, like I said, but they get, they're so tedious. 
and I get bored. That's, that's my problem is I get bored. So I have to preoccupy my mind doing other things. And yeah, but it's looking real good. Look at it. It's getting real big. You see my belly? There we go. But look at it. It's getting real big. I'm, I'm getting close. I have this left and one more skein. And I will be done. So that's exciting. So that's a work in progress. Work in my forever work in progress, I'm calling that one. It's my forever work in progress. So not really. It won't be forever. But that's it as far as crochet goes. When I get too monotonous doing blankets, I have to do little other things in between. Otherwise, I'd just go crazy. I would. I'd go absolutely insane. Some people are so good. Seta, for instance, at Seta's place, if you haven't checked her out, I'm sure you know who she is. But if you don't, go check her out. She is like the blanket queen. She makes tons of blankets. She makes all kinds of stuff. But she, that woman can whip out some blankets, let me tell you. She can. She makes beautiful blankets. A lot of corner to corner and just beautiful blankets. Um, she does a lot of different things, though. Go check her out if you haven't watched her yet. Seta's Place. Seta over at Seta's Place. I'll put her, her YouTube channel in the description box below as well. <coughs> I also want to thank Jane over at Scraptastic Yarn. Thank you, Jane, for the shout out. I am so far behind on my videos. Like, I, I that just came to my... I just realized you did that recently, like within the past day or so. And you gave me a shout out like a month ago. So, sweet Jane, I apologize. Thank you so much. If you guys haven't checked out Jane over at Scraptastic Yarn, go check her out too. She's awesome. She's adorable. I love her. I do. <laughs> all right, guys. I think that is all I have to show for you today. I just wanted to show, I told you guys I'd show you the stuff I had down at the store. I went and picked it up and wanted to show you my triangle totes that I've been working on. Taking a break from my crochet, my crocheting because my wrists get sore. So whenever I need to take a break, I just do sewing. I just do some sewing projects, take it easy. Other than that, folks, that is all I have for you today. I want to thank you all for watching, as always. Again, thank you and welcome to all of my new subscribers. Um, if you guys are, oh, I wanted to say, if you guys are interested, by the way, if you guys want to know how to make these, I would be happy to do a tutorial. I would. I will be happy to do a tutorial. And you can make them too if you're interested. Super easy. Super fun. I love crafty stuff. So if that's something you guys might be interested in learning how to do so you can make them too, just uh, let me know in the comments. And depending on how many requests I get for that, I will uh, maybe make a tutorial on that too. I'm not a big tutorial person just because... I don't know. I don't think I'm that good at them. <laughs> or I forget to explain steps and I'm like constantly backtracking. But I will do my very best if you want to see a tutorial on that. All right, guys. I think that's enough for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Hit that like button, please. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Alaska Crafty Gal Victoria. See ya.